I woke up this morning with my back hurting. I've got some shoulder issues. My, I am showing my age in my body while I am training for the London Marathon next month. And I was trying to envision Mike. Look at me, That's no, I, I, no, there's no way. That's not a look at me, Louie. He's that, doing something. That. He shoehorned it. No. <laughs> that had to be from the flight, right? Come on. That was me introducing how I'm envisioning Mike Tyson at 58 waking up after one of his workouts to get ready to fight Jake Paul, and they dropped a look at me, Louie. It feels like you could have just gotten into the Mike Tyson, Jake Paul story without volunteering. That I think it was the, the internationalness of the marathon. Had it been a domestic marathon? It was a humble brag. Maybe you right. move past it, but it's a London marathon. Ty goes to the runner. You're oh, safe, okay. David. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Juju. Dave, have you seen his shorts? <laughs> He's out. Dave, I have a question before we get into Jake Paul and uh, and Mike Tyson. I was explaining to my wife that you did a 777. And she, for the, those of you in the audience that don't understand what that is, it's seven marathons in seven days in seven number. continents. What? True. And, and she was like, no, that's not true. And I'm like, no, 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 it's true. It I know true. David. Like, he's got the 777, like, on the placard the of, like, tattoo, the whole yeah, thing. like, he's done it. Can you explain, like, how difficult and how terrible that was? So, Lucy, your, your reaction, she has no idea. this is before you joined Metal Arc. This is, was to raise a lot of, I'll do a look at me, Louie, but raised over a million dollars for charity. Contextually, you're covered. Yeah. Thank you. See, it's not, it's not hard to follow the there's rules. There's only 200 people in the world who have ever done this. Still covered? Contextually, you're covered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, start, you were asked about it. You're answering a direct you question. You fly to Cape Town, South Africa, and you wait for the ability to go to a Russian substation in Antarctica. And it is called the Novo substation, and there's no women there. There's only Russians Can't there. Can't talk about it today, then. Who, no, but this is fascinating because our group had two former players from Survivor, Sarah Lucina and Michaela Wingle, and they went to Antarctica and were with these people who had been put in Siberia by Putin and had not seen a woman in months. We went to Antarctica, ran a marathon, get back on a plane, go back to South Africa, run a marathon, the next day, then you get on a plane and go to Dubai and run a marathon, Perth, Australia, run a marathon. These are consecutive days. Then Lisbon, consecutive days. Then Cartagena, Colombia on the sixth day. And we ended right here in Miami. And Lebetard on the seventh marathon. Lebetard came to watch the seventh marathon. He was smoking a cigar while we were starting to run our seventh marathon in seven days. And he was standing right in the path of the runners holding a big cigar. And we were trying to no, – people didn't really know who he was because people were exhausted. And I, I stopped to talk to him for a few minutes. But I will never forget one of my lasting memories from 777 is Dan's cigar. Right here, we ran it right on Miami Beach, right in front of the – on the boardwalk is where the route was. And what does this have to do with Mike Tyson again? So, I love where your head is. Mike Tyson, I woke up feeling hurt. Hey, Sore. Mike Tyson's 58 years old. He's going to get into a boxing ring with Jake Paul. Dan, Dan said it's going to last 15 seconds. Mike is going to kick his ass. And I was thinking about Dan's age and my age. You can't get in a ring when you're 58 years old. Bro, you can't get in a ring with them little bikini drawers you got on, bro. You need to put some pants on them before you box your homeboys, man. Yeah. Look, haven't we gotten over calling out people in sports for being too old for stuff? I feel like that's done, that narrative. Someone's too old to win a Super Bowl, too old to win a national title. He's 58. So what? He's fighting a Jake Paul. Like, yeah, Jake Paul, though, has been training professionally. And I get this video that Mike Tyson, I wouldn't get in the ring with Mike Tyson. Jake Don't get Paul's been training professionally is your defense to, uh, to he's Mike Tyson? I'm saying that Mike is going to wake up the day after fighting Jake Paul and feel worse than I feel now, and I want to know the money. I've been, I talked about this on today's Nothing Personal. I want to know the money. We, it hasn't been reported anywhere. What are they getting paid? Jake is producing it, and he's got a successful production company, but I want to know what the purse is. I don't care if it's sanctioned. I want to know what you'd have to pay me to get into a ring. Purse hasn't been announced yet. You're figuring it's going to be in the millions, just it based on it has not only be. gate because it's going to be done at Jerry World. It's going to be a hundred thousand people there. They're saying that it's not going to be pay per view, right? It's going to be on Netflix. No, it's Netflix, right? So I'm wondering how big the bag Netflix was that they gave them and said, "All right, 
you guys divvy up how you want forty million dollars, eighty million dollars. Like, who knows? Because this is now bringing live sports. I know they've done it before with golf and stuff, but this is bringing now combat sports to Netflix, which is a completely different animal in the pay per view kind of industry that fighting sports lives in. So I led nothing personal with this this morning because Netflix low key is trying to screw everybody. They're trying to get live sports without paying rights fees. So they're creating their own new live sports. It, I disagree on that. They're not just trying to compete and get the rights to regular they NBA won't. or WNBA games. They're doing these hybrid events. They're creating events. They're almost like stunts. I mean, you can lump in Monday Night Raw from the WWE as a live rights deal. It's a $5 billion deal for well, cable televisions, I guess, outside of Monday Night Football, most valuable property. I don't view that as one of the as a major sports deal. I understand, That's but a content okay. deal for me. Fair, fair enough, but it is a, a, a live rights deal in that it is live weekly episodic. But what Netflix? It's episodic. I mean, they have a bunch of shows like that. It's just a matter of what they did is they put on this F one golf match. Yeah, they, they just put on it, the, though, tennis the tennis slam thing. with Nadal be, losing to Alcaraz. Who watched that? Anybody? Anybody noticed that? Yep. I, did, I, you I, did? I, Who won in how many sets, Juju? I'll get back with you. <laughs> I, I didn't really see the uh, the draw for Atkaras versus Nadal when they've actually faced each other in competitive matches, and this is just an exhibition. I, I've I've seen those on ESPN2 at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Skipper specials. Wondering what the draw is for this. Uh, I understand things like the match – and stuff like that being a draw, but you're saying they're kind of carving out these new events in sports that do have rights deals uh, when they're inside the non-exhibition realm. That's the business part of this. They're going to a whole new area with Tyson against Paul. I differentiate this from Nadal and Alcaraz. But what do we know about this fight? We don't know the purses. I I know when Mayweather and Logan Paul got together, it was actually touted as an exhibition. Mm -hmm. Is that what this is going to be? Or is this going to be a competitive fight that counts for their pro They're waiting to see whether it'll get sanctioned. My view is that it will not get sanctioned, nor should it get sanctioned. And I don't think one person will give an absolute rat's ass whether it's sanctioned. No, we're watching either way. Right. We're right. I, I think this is the ultimate curiosity, which is can a young man that's kind of proven himself and, and taken it seriously, but he's still ultimately known for what he does on YouTube, can he get in the, the ring with one of the most feared heavyweights of all time, even though the heavyweight is 58 years old right now? This is all something. This is probably a conversation that has happened in barbershops and sports bars all across America, wondering what will happen. I think that the, the whole circus like atmosphere to this is such a draw. Here's what I thought the conversation was, and I was speaking into the abyss during nothing personal this morning, so I'm so happy to speak to all of you. How many times have you had the conversation, what would it take for you to get in the ring with Mike Tyson? Would you do it for a million dollars? Hell yeah, I'd get in there and take a punch. And my answer always was, because I was always small, is there's no amount of money because I'd be dead. One punch from Mike Tyson, forget, it's like Jeremy and I would be in the hospital and then dead so thanks for lumping me in with you David. well jeremy is there i mean it's accurate but i still i mean i was was just sitting here doing my work i you know just get brought into that one thanks happy international women's day (laughs) (laughs) so my answer is zero it it doesn't have the air of sadness that some of these other types of like stunt boxing events it's a genuine curiosity in more ways than logan paul floyd mayweather ever was because jake paul has spent several years building up some credibility um, and it's Mike Tyson. It's someone that is a true, legit heavyweight that still goes occasionally viral with these workout videos that has crazy speed on and power on those punches still. I think that's the difference, though, Mike. You said it. It's Mike Tyson, right? Yeah. Floyd Mayweather was never the boxer that was going to knock you out. He's a defensive boxer. He was the guy that was going to pick his spots, counterpunch you, and Logan Paul, or, yeah, Logan Paul was going to just kind of spar with him. This is Mike Tyson who has a runway to get ready for the next couple of months here. I know... A year ago, he was walking with a cane, right? Let's let's <laughs> yes, be honest about that because we're playing the videos of him hitting the bags and stuff. But he was walking with a cane like six months ago. You you have that getting the runway of let me get my body back into shape, let me get my mentality back in, and one punch. And could if it's knock not sanctioned, oh, what is flowing the, through that body? The juice. <laughs> is there any other video of Mike Tyson boxing besides one I, of these little draws? There is. There's one with red. It. He's got red draws on the other one. Oh. My view is that Mike Tyson will go it will go longer than you think because Netflix is going to want some juice, so it's not going to be what Dan said. Oh, they're getting juice. <laughs> There's going to be plenty of juice. It's not going to be a 15-second fight. Didn't Dan say that? He spent all this time saying it'll go 15 seconds. Uh, there's no bad scenario in, in the result. None. Yeah. I just don't want to do it. <laughs>
fun week winding down. Another reminder, youtube.com slash at Lebitard Show to watch Ben Lyons, to watch David Sampson, to watch Adnan Burke, who's presently working for MLB Network. He's making the drive down from Clearwater. I'm sure he's surrounded by all of his favorite types of people in Clearwater, <laughs> uh, given his thoughts on Scientology. We can't wait to see him this weekend. We're going to be doing the uh, live Oscars watch along live from the same carpet here, emanating from about as geographically far from the Oscars as you can probably get inside this country. But we're going to make it fun. A lot of Metal Arc luminaries in attendance, some people dressing up for the occasion, maybe Lucy, maybe not, depending on what Caitlin Clark and I would do. But we're going to have a lot of fun, and it's our first stab at it. And this is a true second screen experience. Maybe some of you haven't watched the movies. Well, that's what Ben, Ann, and David and company are here to, to do for you. And uh, you just have us watching along as you are on the main broadcast, and we're going to have a lot of fun with it. To close out our week, we're going to do what we always do later on in the show. That means a club. But right now, it means a polls recap. Juju, if you have the polls, make sure you pull them up and know that the polls are presented by the new season of the Peacock original, The Traders, streaming now with new episodes Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern, only on Peacock. Take it away, Juju. Yes, sir. I love The Traders. It's such a great show. Poll number one, an important one. Who is the biggest traitor of all time? Lucifer, wow. Judas, wow. or Chris Whittingham? Oh, oh, and out of 8,158 votes, 79% say Chris Whittingham. Yeah, wow. Fancy lad. Sorry, brother. Wherever you are, we love you. No. No, we don't. <laughs> This is just a revolting video. Right, and his hair did not move in a centimeter. God, those seats stink. God, that song just brings me <laughs> such like club joy. Club level at MSG, the Mecca. So much, the Mecca. So much joy when you hear that song, huh? Poll number two. Which is worse, a person who doesn't care if you like them at all or a person who tries too hard to get you to like them? 86% says a try too hard is worse off. Yeah. yeah. Which one are you, David? I'm the former. <laughs> I know what the former is. Tony doesn't. <laughs> Poll number three. Who is the most beloved athlete in Philadelphia history? Out of 70, oh, 7,580 votes, Dr. J, Allen Iverson, Jason Kelsey, or Rocky Balboa? The answer was Rocky Balboa. Big I can't believe we didn't have Chase Utley on Big that list. Dub yeah. for me. Chase Utley would not have beaten Rocky Balboa. Oh, my no God. One's beating he was Rocky. so beloved. Fictional Says character. <laughs> That's kind of sad. That's pretty sad for a sports town, especially Final one line. with the reputation of Philadelphia. Yeah, very sad. Fly Eagles fly. A poll number, whatever this one is, <laughs> is King's Hawaiian bread the greatest yeah. bread of all time? No. No, it's 5,322 votes. 55% say yes, it is wow. the greatest bread of all time. The goat wow. bread. Kings, Hawaiians, ladies no and gentlemen. No challah bread. Uh, mahalo. Not three breads better than that. <laughs> L'chaim. Uh, Couldn't get poll. 10 votes for that. <laughs> the next poll. If you know how to bake, do you know how to cook? No. 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 Mm, no 71% of the audience says no. no. You guys are right. Correct. I don't know how to bake. You know Great job bake. on all these polls. So I know bro. how to get baked. Absolutely. And oh, yeah. then, oh, hello, brother. <laughs> the last poll. And remember, these are brought to you by The Trader That's US. Right. You're a great, fantastic Win. show. I'd suggest you watch it today. <laughs> <laughs> are McDonald's fries the greatest French fries of all time? 6,835 votes say yes, they are. 53% oh, of, of the crowd agrees. Wow. Back to you, David. Remember to watch the Traders U.S. every single day of your life. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of days. That's a lot of traders. A lot of traders. <laughs> I wonder whether or not uh, Russell Wilson has time to catch up on his TV as he is going on this tour, which is so offensive to me that I can hardly focus, that he is going around as a release player, an overpaid stiff and he's choosing his next team, flirting with the Giants, flirting with the Steelers. I would like Russell Wilson to be banished so that Whoa. he can't play anywhere. Come on, dude. You got to put and some I'm, respect on I'm Russell Wilson. I'm not putting Wilson, one ounce of respect on this because, because in his goodbye, 
which I know you all looked at, that long tweet when he said goodbye. Didn't to, read it. Too long. Didn't read it. You didn't read it? No, no. 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 because it was too long. I knew he was happy, cut. Like, happy okay, for whatever. you or sad that happened. Yeah. Yeah. Even he the tweeted best anything. part Married was I was happy that he thanked God at the end. No problem. I, I'm all in for the religion. But he went through the list of all the other people he thanked, including specific players like his running backs, his wide receivers, the guys in the kitchen, the guys in the video room, everybody. He's a man of the people, Russ. No mention of the people who gave him the money. Are they no longer there? Does it? Because or they're not paying them. What does that have to do with it? Well, I mean, why think an administration that the was GM's there the for same? Like three weeks? The GM's the same. Okay. So, all right. I understand why you're looking at it this way. He thanked, first of all, it was outrageous, the size of the thank you. But there so, are also the people that fired him. They didn't. Oh no! Fired fired him. Yeah, I mean, they. Get, I I know he got a nice little golden parachute on the way out, but <laughs> right. yeah, Remember he lost his job. Season. Remember during the season, yeah. they said, "Hey, we want you to come off the bench, and we want you to lose." A, I forgot the details. They, of it, did, they, they didn't want to even play him because right. if he got hurt, it fully guaranteed the deal. Right. right. Smart was, move. Why would you thank them? He like, was insulted <laughs> by it, though. You can understand then, why he was but insulted. Then by then ask it. for more guarantee money up front. He got an extension that he in no way should have gotten. That contract. Are you going to say that the Russell Wilson contract with the Broncos doesn't rival the Ben Simmons contract as some of the worst contracts not, of all no, time? No, I don't think anyone's making that argument. I'm just applying logic to the, what you wondered aloud, which is why didn't he thank the people that gave him this contract? Because, I mean, the administration, while he got a big contract from the Broncos, they also told him, you know, sit and run on the bench. We don't even want to risk you getting hurt because that means we have to pay you more. This contract is so bad. Take a hike and leave. I mean, I can understand why someone feels some type of way about that. Well, I found it to be offensive, and now the question is, all these teams are all excited to get him. You think he's an upgrade over Daniel Jones? Yes, Absolutely. yes and Instantly. we don't know what Daniel the Jones is going to look like. Is, no. People are, are obsessed I, I, I with the I think it's kind name. of flat. I think it's kind of flat between the two, but Daniel Jones will have a hot, much higher cap number. Much higher cap number, and we don't know what he's going to look like after he comes back from a season-ending yeah. injury. Actually, let me walk that back. I feel pretty strongly that Daniel Jones is better at this point in his career than Russell Wilson, but when you apply the logic of the cap number, guys, keep in mind what they had to do to make Russell Wilson playable, which is, I think he was also a willing participant in this. He played ultra-conservative. They were a really painful watch. For him to get to his numbers to a place now where you look at the box score and say, hey, he wasn't that bad compared to the previous year. They, I mean, there was no nuts to that offense. Vanilla offense, no nuts. Do you know that with all the dead cap money they have, that it's actually an advantage to some owners to have dead cap money because you don't have, it counts towards your salary cap, but it's not cash. So actually you are spending to the cap, but it's not a cash expenditure. And so all the criticisms that we make of all the big dead cap money, there's some teams that search for dead cap money because it's not money you're paying to a player. It's money that you're not actually paying to anybody. People don't talk about that. No, but that's that seems like a pretty losing philosophy if that's what you're playing. But if for. you're if it's your a, team it's a way is to not kind of good, keep things afloat, but it's not necessarily a way to build towards. But the if future. you're rebuilding, yeah, so it yeah. actually does have a monetary value to it, sure. in that it Big counts time. against a. It's a league that legislates equality with a salary cap, but you're actually in some cases not even spending beyond the cap floor because you have this dead cap out there. And so that's the thing that need that would be a rule that you could change if you're the union where dead cap would not actually count. It's cash payroll that you have to have the floor and the ceiling, but the league does not do that. Do you think, think he ends up somewhere and if he ends up somewhere will he be assuming that he's the starter, you think? Yes, according to where he goes. I think that it's a couple of teams that could benefit from him, like the Steelers, I think the Giants as well, because of the, his numbers. Like, you pay him $2 million versus paying Tua Tagovailoa 55 in certain situations. Or Daniel Jones $40 million. Wow, a second dollars. one of these takes? I thought I thought. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. He got a lot of people to pay in Miami. Juju <clears throat> got Five dollars. You want to pay Tyreek. You want to pay all these people. And I'm not saying that Russell Wilson is the same as he used to be, but I think that he so there's still good. something to yeah. say about him because that Denver Broncos offensive line, that the yeah. offense in total, it was not a fair assessment of the of his actual game to me. So no. you want the Dolphins to get rid of Tua? Don't resign him and they bring in Russell Wilson at one point two one million. Is that I'm not saying I want these. I'm just giving you things to ponder, like uh, my brother Tony. That's he why I put it in the folder. Yeah. Ponder. He's not telling you what to think. He's just asking, just asking if, like, if you want to. Yeah, I mean. Here's what I think. Russell Wilson will get a job, and he shouldn't.
because he's not good enough to be a starting quarterback. Man, don't, they don't can't even get Justin Fields a starting Dude, quarterback. Pitt, Pittsburgh makes a lot of sense. Then because, why is he stopping in New York on the way to Pittsburgh? I don't know. Because he's a nice guy. Leverage, leverage, baby. He's, he's married to Ciara. You know that, Dave. Leverage. There's no leverage to, to see, go. David. He's making the max.